not, say, I'd like to <clears throat> not traps or something. Well, a, um, well uh, Paul has just shown me, since I talked about quotes on Monday, he, he showed me a, uh, a book that he was reading that, that uh, just happened to be a nice quote for, uh, for our course. And so this is, this is by Cam, Camus, The Plague. What? Okay. No, no, this is translated into English, but it's a, it's, it's, there's a story about this writer who's, um, who's visiting his doctor, and he says, what I really want, doctor, is this, on the day when the manuscript reaches the publisher, I want him to stand up, after he's read it through, of course, and to say to the staff, gentlemen, hats off. Um, this is something like what I wanted when I was writing the Scientific American article when I, when I, okay, then he says, um, <clears throat> He was uh, almost excruciating pains to bring it to perfection. Evenings, whole weeks spent on one word, just think, sometimes on a mere conjunction. I'd like you to understand, I grant you it's easy enough to choose between but and and. It's a bit more difficult to decide between and and then, but definitely the hardest thing may be to know whether one should put an and or leave it out. And uh, I think that'll come up in discussion today too, probably somewhere in here. But anyway. Um, Opening phrase is giving me no end of trouble. Um, and here's the, <laughs> he starts out with the beginning sentence, which is terrible. <laughs> um, it's almost as bad as a dark and stormy night, uh, you know, but anyway. Uh, um, he was, all right, well, anyway, uh, the, what do you think of it, doctor, and all this, and so on. Um, it's only a rough draft. Oh, well, it's. It looks like something I'd like to read the rest of. So, <clears throat> so I, I guess I should, yeah, I'm, you know, this quarter I'm writing this book, Concrete Math, and uh, and I should probably describe to you some of the joys and sorrows associated with this because it's I'm sort of I'm sort of uh, you know filled with it all, um, and I had this great um, uh, inspiration during the summer. I mean, I went to see Walt. This, I went to see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and I came out of that movie and I said, boy, that's really an incredible work of art. Who could have conceived of doing that? What, what, uh, in 1937, who could have conceived of doing such a project and carrying it through and getting it, getting it out and everything? And I said, boy, you know, I would love to, I would want to create a work of art like this. And in my, my, this book, Concrete Math, is going to ha have to be just, just a gem. Um, uh, but with one condition, however, and that is that I want to finish it in three months. Um, I mean, I want to I want to write the greatest possible work of art, except that I that I only got three months because I really have many other things to do. So, uh, so I, I'm not able to spend three months on a conjunction, you know, in this in this book. Um, but I did. I, I was inspired anyway. I tried to do my best. But on the other hand, I know I have to crank out about four pages a day on the average. And I mean, that's average. That's every day, uh, including Saturdays and Sundays. And so, uh, and so this meant um, um, uh, not slacking off and and, uh, and 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 keeping to a fairly fairly rigid schedule. Still, I'm, I'm here. It is uh, November already, and I'm still reasonably happy. Um, uh, and I took time out last night to see a Fassbinder movie. Uh, I wondered what it was a kind of a crazy film, but uh, it was a good break. In other words, uh, uh, I haven't been working uh, 24 hours a day on this book, although I have to really, you know, uh, concentrate. Now, yesterday I finished breakfast and I said, well, maybe I'll take a nap. And, uh, you know, I knew that I should really... I should really write some more about asymptotics and uh, wasn't really uh, enthused about it. Well, then I decided to, to get warmed up. I would, go, I would go proofread some of the stuff that had already been written in the chapter. And, uh, and, uh, and actually, the chapter started out rather well, I thought. So I was glad, you know, when I looked at it. And, and so that, that encouraged me to, to, to go on. And then I had another idea on how to fix something. And so and once I got, get over the threshold and get started on it, then I get interested in the subject and, you know, and, and, uh, and enjoy the and enjoy the writing, and especially afterwards, after a, a, a tough problem has been solved, um, that's, uh, there's actually pleasure there. Um, but on Sunday, I was just, I was so mad, I was probably going to go out of my mind. I just couldn't find a way to, to, to make this exam. I mean, I, I had a, a perfect derivation of everything, except I needed one result that, that needed the theory of, uh, of complex variables or, or Fourier series or something that wasn't in the book. 
and uh, and I didn't want to, you know, I liked the book to be self-contained, and I, and I struggled and over and over again. I tried to, to find to find proofs of this of this of this result. Uh, probably impossible. So I finally had to flush it from my mind and get over that get over that hang-up. But uh, but I but it, it did affect me. I mean, I was I was a not a very uh, lovable person on Sunday afternoon, and <laughs> finally I. I, uh, I I wrote a letter to Ron Graham, who's co-author, and said, uh, "Ron, see if you can find it. <laughs> and otherwise, uh, we'll, I'll just quote it as something you know that uh, it can be proved that, or you know, it's something that uh, beyond the scope of the book, but uh, also happens to be true. Um, it would be nice to have the whole book self-contained, but it might be impossible. Maybe this is a result Euler didn't know, and I don't go any any past the mathematics Euler knew. Anyway, this is. Uh, but I, I'm trying to give you some of the feeling that I have about uh, as I'm writing the book." Um, of um, um, sometimes uh, uh, wake in the morning with an with an idea that says that you know I just say oh yeah this is going to be perfect for the thing and, and other days I say well um, I I've got to do this book today uh, or else and so I have so I do it and I get started as a duty um, uh, and you and uh, generally once I get started um, that's the hard part so, okay. now. Uh, You've got one more week, right, to do your, speaking of, of, of cranking out pages per day and so on, uh, next Wednesday is is the day we'd like you to turn in the, as much as you have of the term paper, and the more the better, because I have two professional um, professionals who will actually be reading it and making feedback on it. One is uh, Mary Claire, and one is Rosalie Stemmer, who will be who will be lecturing also on what she sees in your, in your drafts, and so. Um, and so uh, if you take advantage of this uh, of this golden opportunity to get uh, uh, to get ex special expertise for, for feedback. And <clears throat> the rest of today, I want to talk about some, some, one of my battles with professional feedback. Um, the um, uh, the outcome. The uh, uh, I. I'm certainly the first to admit that I don't know everything about writing, but but I, I it's also reassuring, I, I suppose, to know that the, the people who who do it full time for a living um, don't know everything either. Uh, Paul, no, you just raised your hand. No, yes, he did. Hey, your hand. Okay, and so um, so let me let me give you the, the try to give you the experience. So here's a here's the. the Beginning of the correspondence is it's um, 1975, um, uh, edited, uh, from the editor of Scientific American, uh, a man who who does a, uh, accomplishes an awful lot, and so he's say uh, he's inviting me uh, to write an article, and he says uh, he'd like it to be 6,000 words long. If you're inclined to proceed, we'd like to have it by October 1, and our customary payment for the article is $500. Uh, what does that come to per word? Is that 12 cents a word? That's, wait, no. I wish you divide by, well, how do you do this? Okay, $500 uh, divided by 6,000 words. So it's the other way around, isn't it? So it's, what? 8.3 cents a word? Okay, so you know, each and counts. 8.3 cents in a bank. Well, actually, I, I should make that um, after the article was published, they they put it in their reprint series, which they give uh, especially to high school students, and they and uh, and they and they they give they give royalties to the authors in this reprint series. I get a half a penny for every reprint of this article that they that they sell. And um, amazingly enough, um, uh, uh, I've been getting five or ten dollars a year for the, net, the last ten years. <laughs> From from this, which means you know, ten dollars. That's two thousand reprints or something like that. So they're, they're using so they're using this. You know, it's, it's a big money earner. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I also got a a royalty from the Russians of uh, one kopeck for, for every uh, copy of the Art of Computer Programming that that they published, and that amounted to. Uh, but that was two hundred thousand copies, and so. Uh, uh, that amounted to 2,000 rubles, which, which I didn't know how to spend. But I mean, it was nice to ha nice to ha nice to, that they would give me one kopeck forever. Now, um, 
so you see there's money in associated with writing and, and Jeff Bowman says he's going to talk a little bit more about that next week uh, in part of his talk but he wants to talk most of, most of the time about the the uh, uh, something about uh, rising above minutiae <laughs> minutiae uh, uh, to um, uh, and, and, and above details that can be distracting to, uh, to abstract algorithms that, that, that try to con uh, or abstract examples I mean that try to illustrate a point without without taking taking the tension away from the from the main point. So let's see. Um, so that was the invitation, and um, and then I, I I must have written back and uh, and asked some questions about scientific about about illustrations, and then um, and then uh, so he I got a uh, so he so he gives me his idea as to what uh, as to what algorithms mean. He doesn't know what what they mean and so on, but he says that they have 600,000 readers. Um, and um, and so um, uh, you should try to uh, address you know you know your audience is one of the things so he he's uh, um, telling me this and he says he wants to get it by October 1 um, in September it, on September 29th which is shortly before October 1 he uh, he, he reconsiders and, and relents for for December I don't remember being ill that summer but I must have been and uh, so on December 15th, I did, I did get it to him, and uh, so he, he he tells me he's got the article. And so on, uh, it will take us a little while to give it the undistracted attention it deserves. I'll, I'll read between the lines. Uh, uh, we got to check it out and see if if we're at all interested. Um, and uh, so then uh, January 9th, it it says that uh, um, essentially that it's accepted. For publication and uh, and uh, they are uh, uh, but they like to have a balance among the sciences and so they they delay the publication and so the, so this is a, a form letter that says uh, uh, don't call us we'll call you but uh, we will call you sometime indeed and um, and they already paid me for it so I so I you know I cashed in right there and so you know as far as they're concerned uh, you know they, they would probably be glad never to hear from me again <laughs> um, okay now let's see um, February 9th 1977 was when I next heard that was a, a year later um, and um, and uh, this it's worth quoting from the beginning of his letter <coughs> um, uh, let me emphasize that you may correct or further rework this copy totally as you see fit. As you know, we have undertaken to make the article slightly easier for the general reader to get into and to follow. But in the process, we may very well have inadvertently introduced errors of fact or emphasis. We take it for granted that you will want to repair such errors. Above all, let me stress that we do not prefer our prose to yours, nor are we trying to impose any style of our own. As I've indicated, our proposals have more to do with level of discourse. If anything strikes you as being uncharacteristic of your normal mode of address, please do not hesitate to change it. <clears throat> okay, well, I, I, uh, and then in two weeks they would like to hear and so on. So, um, um, and so uh, this is a, a, of course, a form letter too, but it's well, it's uh, it, so it goes out to everybody, and uh, but it gave me the, you know, certainly the the liberty to not to hesitate to change things now I guess I should I should resume this I should go before I get into this part of the story with the uh, with with what went on be before that so um, I started out let's see do I have the do I have my handwritten draft I guess not but um, I did uh, I guess uh, I as I you know this was Phyllis, Phyllis typed the first draft here and then I I made edits, edits to that, and I got a note here on the on her type manuscript that she saved called "So Beautiful I Could Cry." I, you know, I was telling her that she did great typing on this thing. And now here's the note to the editors that I wrote on the on the uh, draft. I said, "I've tried to imitate Scientific American style in this draft. Thus, the figures which appear <laughs> right there. You know, I use a wicked which." <laughs> The figures that appear at the end of the manuscript are accompanied by longish captions which <coughs> that give the message of the article in capsule form. 
When the text refers to a figure, I've left the box like so-and-so, meaning point to figure three using a phrase like at the top of the opposite page, which is what they do in their style. They don't have figure. Of course, I know that my writing style is only a curious approximation to yours, so it will be fun to see what you do to this, my masterpiece. <laughs> All right. So that was what I had sent them. And... Um, uh, okay, and uh, then I got back the edited galley, uh, uh, as, I, as we said, of February of uh, 77. Um, okay, uh, where are we? I'll give you some of the bottom line here next after I... Re at, so I, I've got three letters that I wrote on February 17th. Um, and one of them is to Martin Gardner. Uh, who, as I think you know, was a, a monthly columnist for the Scientific American for about 25 years and retired a few years ago. So um, he's a good friend. And um, so I said, Dear Martin, on Monday I received the typewritten manuscript of an article about algorithms I wrote for Scientific American. It was somewhat, I was somewhat shocked by what seems to be a very poor editing job. I don't want to cause any hard feelings by complaining to Dennis Flanagan, whose correspondence has always been very cordial and efficient, nor do I want to waste any of your valuable time. But since I have frequently felt like screaming at many of the preposterous things that were done, I must vent my feelings somehow by writing them down. <clears throat> okay, I realize that my own style is far from ideal. I intentionally break a lot of time-honored rules. For example, starting sentences with but when I wish to make a strong point. I tie long sentences like this one together with semicolons when I really should break them up as newspaper reporters do. But I was astonished to see how many editorial changes were made that took perfectly good English and turned it into something that would be worth no more than B minus on a high school term paper. Now, here I used that instead of which. It was pretty good there. Example, I wrote most common words. This was changed to communist words. The term not only grates on my eardrums, it also fails to appear in my dictionary. <laughs> Example, I wrote, when we study how to use computers properly, problems arise which, <laughs> excuse me, are interesting in their own right. Um, of course, I should have written that, and so the, naturally any, any, anybody who reads this sentence uh, and has been trained knows that it was written by a poor writer, so it has to be rewritten. But here's what came out. In the study of how to properly employ computers, problems that are interesting in their own right arise. Now, that was a professional. Do, no, okay, so not only is the infinitive split, you know, to properly employ computers. I mean, you, you split infinitives aren't always wrong, but you don't have to go out of your way to split them. Uh, but the whole rhythm of the sentence went, uh, went away. Okay, example I wrote. <clears throat> note, note that we are speaking here about algorithms whose sole purpose is to determine the best search tree. Edited version. I should point out that here I have been discussing several algorithms, the sole purpose of which is to determine the best search tree. Still could and awkward. What? Now, what? What, what do you? I, I yeah. Wasn't as bad as it wasn't as bad. Yeah. Pu push the. Yeah. Yeah. Push the button when you say. <clears throat> we just we didn't think that was quite as bad as the other one. No, the other one was real. Was it's a real still loser. worse than yeah. what you had originally written. Okay. <laughs> Uh, a, a comma would help, um, yeah, um, but uh, the, the rhythm was just, I, I thought it, was, it, was, it sounded like um, engineer ease for sure. So uh, now here it turned out that what I didn't know when I submitted the article that Scientific American doesn't ever talk about we in the way that I was accustomed to doing. I hadn't noticed that little detail. Of this. So, so the editor had to really change it to, to I here, um, and um, but it's still it's very awkward. I, and um, <clears throat> other problems: the repetition of the same unusual words in several adjacent sentences when synonyms could just as well have been used. Use of the same phrase to introduce two consecutive sentences or paragraphs, and so on. But one more example should suffice to convey the great skill of this particular editor. That is a very large number, approximately equal to grunt, pi being the familiar 3.14159. The most basic law of mathematical writing is to put words, not just a comma, between independent formulas. Again, the sentence doesn't flow. Well, <clears throat> so you can see why my original version was altered in two of the above examples. I, uh, I'm going to talk about above later on sometime. Um, uh, uh, I 
uh, that's controversial if I should say the examples above or the above examples. Uh, we don't ever say the below examples, uh, but we say none of the above. Yeah. Uh, so it would have been better to say two of the examples above, uh, but uh, I, I'm, uh, you know, another, another glitch in my style I didn't know about at the time. I failed to realize the scientific American doesn't like to talk about we. Okay, I can adjust to that restriction. Well, it means a lot of passive voice and stuffy sentences that one can verify. The resulting prose doesn't have to be so involute and contorted as the draft I received. And I tell about my personal opinion, which you all know, know very well. It was hard for me to change the manuscript back into something I would want my name to be attached to. On the other hand, I suppose that this particular copy editor also thinks that my style is awkward, opaque, and preposterous. All I know is I don't feel like rewriting your columns when I see them, but I felt like changing about every sentence of this manuscript. Something must be different about the two. So um, please don't bother to reply. I had just had to explode a little bit and explain my feelings that someone other than my wife and my secretary, I feel better now. All right. <laughs> Uh, no. Uh, what? Oh, I've stayed in his house a few times and so on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're, um, uh, <clears throat> dear Mr. Flanagan, <laughs> here's an edited, ver the same day, of course. Uh, here's an edited version of the edited ver version of my article. I followed your advice and changed what I did not find characteristic of my normal mode of address, even though this meant a rather extensive list of changes. I have carefully, well, here's, the, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to show you this. Carefully consider the use of that, of this versus that versus which, and other grammatical things, which or that, are sometimes in dispute. I also broke the rule about putting commas and periods inside of quotation marks in some places, since that rule does not apply when the quoted thing is a sentence, is a sequence of letters or symbols being referred to in a technical manner as that precise sequence. Then when three dots appear, or they should be raised, uh, and so on, I talk about that. Um, Note that the latter period is outside the quotes because I'm speaking about a sequence of symbols one writes. Okay. Referring to, when referring to algorithm A, B, etc. and steps A1, I have deleted all italic markings since it's customary in computer science to use Roman type in these contexts. Uh, I sincerely hope that I'll have a chance to read galley proofs since so many changes were necessary since there is so much technical material that is somewhat typographical in nature. Um, and um, I say I'm grateful that your copy editor found a misprint in one of my formulas that I would now, otherwise have caught, and I'm also glad that many things I glossed over too hastily are now stated clearly. On the other hand, I'm sorry that I found necessary to disagree with his or her prose style in so many places. All I can say is I've tried diligently to make the finished product satisfy my ear. Above all, please do not use the non-word communist in the article. I thought, uh, well, now, then I had another uh, Another letter the same day to Flanagan, which is about the uh, about the captions and illustrations, which is another another issue. And they, I had, um, um, and and the question was how to make the illustrations work out. And they decided that uh, it would be interesting to, to to use to use first names. And so they they made up an example. And when I um, oh wait a minute, I guess they used um, yeah. Uh, what is this, a Zelda? It wasn't too hard to decipher the method by which first names in figure one were determined once I noticed Zelda, um, because on the, uh, on the uh, masthead of the, of the article, um, it, um, uh, it mentions a Zelda. So I knew that there was a Zelda on, on, on his staff. And then I conjecture that your secretary's name is Adele and that her office is between yours and the publishers. Uh, uh, I mean, there was a list of names in which, uh, in which there was Dennis Adele Gerard, apparently, and so on. So, uh, so this was uh, so the people there at the staff had had made had made the use, and then I, and then I was saying maybe we should use um, um, uh, surnames, and I talked about the uh, article in Mad Magazine where where the the editors there had used had put their names into my article too. Uh, uh, but as I was writing this letter, I changed my mind, decided the best list of surnames is obvious after all, Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, and so on in this order. And so then it made the reasonable example for the sorting algorithm. And so on. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so several things were going on in parallel there. And um, and i got to show you now the article and uh, what the copy editor, some of the things the copy editor did and, and so on. So i gotta, I got to get my tables here ready in parallel. First of all, well, I, I guess I'd better, no, no, I'd better go through the correspondence while we're in the correspondence. So here it says, March 7th, uh, two weeks later, and close a proof of your article, together with separate copies of illustrations. You may be mildly interested to know that this is quite unprecedented in our scheme of things. Working as we do with a large manufacturing printer, 
we must deal with proofs on a 48-hour cycle. This, of course, leaves no time for the inner session of the author. Normally, we do all the necessary buffing and polishing at an earlier stage. In this case, it's good in nature that material calls for the closest scrutiny of all concerned, particularly yourself, and so on. So, so they did something that they that they never do, and they didn't even have Federal Express mail in those days. And they, but, so they're they're working with Donnelly, the biggest printer in the United States. Donnelly is located in Chicago, and they send him their stuff from New York. And um, uh, and and Donnelly the, the, uh, prints most of the magazines of the of the country. It certainly did at that time, and and still does most of them, I think. Um, and um, so I got these I got these galley proofs uh, to, to to look at. So let me line line those up. Uh, but then he says, now as you will see in the proof, you and we are disagreeing about two matters of English. One is the proper use of which and that. In this we follow Fowler, and since there is a distinction in the meaning of the two words, we feel it should not be obliterated by using which interchangeably with that. Absolutely correct. And, uh, and uh, the second matter concerns communist. It happens that there is currently a minor e epidemic of putting perfectly good comparative and superlative forms aside in favor of using more and most. Almost every day I see more severe for severer. Just the other day I saw in the Times most stuffy. Uh, no, that one, I, most stuffy I can see, but more, but severer, I'm not sure. Um, dictionary gives the comparative and superlative forms of common as commoner and commonest, so he has a different dictionary. He found a dictionary that has it. It said that J. Edgar Hoover used to pronounce communist as communist, but surely we do not have to worry about that ambiguity. In other words, we would prefer to stick with the traditional usage, and so we have gone, and then we've gone along with you and, and um, about the quotes and things like that. We greatly appreciate uh -huh, <coughs> the pains you took in going through the edited copy and so on. And he says that. Well, it's, his words are, uh, are somewhat tr true there. Okay, so I, um, and I have to say, um, and I, I'll show you the letter that Martin wrote to me too. Um, I'm glad you wrote to me about those difficulties and I'd like to reply even though you suggested I needn't. The problem has come up before with articles by top mathematicians. I find it hard to understand why. I work entirely at home, have little contact with the editor, except once a month when I usually go in for luncheon. The entire editorial staff has at the Harvard Club. I know that I knew that your piece had been accepted, that Dennis liked it very much, but I have no notion at the moment of who was assigned to it. I'll try to find out discreetly at the next luncheon. <laughs> I, I know that, that Ulam, Stan Ulam, uh, who uh, died a couple of years ago, but uh, he was extremely unhappy about the editing of the last article he wrote for essay. From what you quote, I would certainly agree with your feelings, and I wish you would write Dennis a letter. I considered passing it on to him, but after thinking about it, I prefer not because he didn't want to have strained relations. I should, you know, he says, needless to say, I won't, wouldn't want Dennis to see a copy of this letter. Let's hide this whole thing. He, but he's, but he's a, you know, he goes on and it's rather, uh, rather. Um, and then he goes on and tells me some mathematical news and so on. And I wrote him a note saying, uh, I decided to forget about my unhappiness with the writing style of that particular essay editor. Um, I decided that the editors have so much to do in so little time, there's no chance for them really to polish things up. Mathematics computer science articles are sufficiently unusual as to constitute a real headache anyway. I spent one and a half pleasant hours working with this particular editor by phone on the revisions to the galley proofs. So I'm pleased with the way everything has turned out. If I hadn't been so tired, when the original manuscript came in, it arrived on top of three other crises. I would never have been upset anyway. I would just have written the incident off like I have on a half dozen other times I've confronted the media. It takes a rare talent like Gina Berry Colada's uh, to, to do this kind of writing. She's uh, one of the best writers about mathematics, so I shouldn't be upset when everybody doesn't have it. So that's uh, sort of the conclusion of the correspondence part of this. I don't have to go back to that. Ah, uh, let's see. So I got the article that I and I got the copy editing, and then I got the page proofs, and then I can show you the final article because somehow we have to we have to look through this thing the way you know, in order to understand this, you have to have to collate a whole bunch of different stuff, a whole bunch of different stuff that goes into this uh, writing. Okay, so I've got the, um, the here is what I where. Here's what I wrote and sent to them. Um, and then I got then I, the last thing I have to. Okay. Um, okay. 
came out here. Actually, it has it has also another illustration that was wasn't in my in my original manuscript here. I got a advertisements are also sprinkled. Of course, magazines are are supposed to uh, are supposed to sell things, and so they so they so I imagine they they didn't have had one of their rare computer ads in those days. But uh, so it did come out, um, and uh, so I so in case we have to look at what actually came out in the in the real <laughs> world, I uh, have to go to that. Okay. So now what's next here? All right. Um, uh, the beginning of the article was completely rewritten, and, and I should say uh, at the at, and uh, the beginning, as I said, is the most important part. Uh, and that's where you want to get the reader hooked. And here uh, was the great I had um, was a um, great advantage, of course, that the copy editor doesn't know computer science, and so can see exactly where I'm using jargon, where I'm in, where that's where I'm blind to these things. And um, so my original my my start my first first paragraph was not was not at all great. Ten years ago, it would not have been unusual for a scientist to think that the word algorithm was simply a careless typist rendition of the word logarithm. The rapid rise of computer science, which has the study of algorithms as its main focal point, has now changed the situation. Algorithm increasingly appears in people's vocabularies. I mean, right now, I even overhear people using it uh, uh, in, in buses, you know. Uh, but this wasn't true in 1977. Perhaps in another 10 years, newspaper reporters will even be able to assume that their readers know what an algorithm is. I think that happened in 10 years. Yeah. Well, so anyway, I, our language has several words that almost describe the concept, procedure, recipe, process, routine, and so on. This was mine, yeah. So now let's see what happened, what came out. Okay, so 10 years ago, the word algorithm was unknown to most educated people. Indeed, it was scarcely necessary. First of all, no, she doesn't want to say scientist because the scientific American goes to educated people, of course, and so on. Um, the rapid rise of computer science has changed all that. The word is now essential. There are several other words that almost but not quite capture the concept. Uh, this is uh, her, her correction. Capture the concept of an algorithm procedure and so on method. She left out the word rigmarole, which I thought was uh, was reasonable. But you know, and, and an algorithm is a set of rules. Well, now, notice that uh, these sentences are all uh, short. Um, and... Uh, that was better than mine, where my sentences tended to be to, to be quite, rather long, and so on. And so, she, so it got in there. Uh, but um, uh, but I still wanted to, I had to put I wanted to put in the um, um, a plug for uh, uh, algorithms uh, as being a main part of computer science, as perhaps a one of the more more important unifying principles, because I did, I I want I wanted people to realize this. Um, and uh, so, anyway, but anyway, so it, um, and in general, there are many of the things in in my article that got greatly improved by means of this of this uh, of this rewrite, uh, especially taking out the jargon and then uh, and then slowing things down where I was going too fast at a, at a bad pace. Um, so, so the, the fact is then that I could that having the rewrite was was a great advantage for the final quality of the of the of the of the product. On the other hand, a rewrite of the rewrite, which is what I said to my letter, Dennis, was was much much better, was was you know a sort of uh, two orders of magnitude better than the original, and uh, and uh, and I was able to get rid of all the all the all the glitches uh, that that came out. Now let's see. So let, but let's let's go into. Um, I don't understand why the copy editor would change change. Uh, I had written can fruitfully be studied, and she changed it to can be fruitfully studied. Um, I have no idea, so I put it back again. Um, okay, now let's see. Um, but I should get more into uh, into things that are that are general than than too specific. And so um, here was one of the here was one of the cases where where the jargon had to be had to be changed. And what and so we can take a look at this now. So this is the. You can, by the way, typographically, you can tell that, that you can tell when I'm showing you something that came out of Scientific American. It was in, in this. It was written with, you know, with this funny word processor. It's 1977. Uh, uh, that um, that uh, 
tries to estimate the uh, the way the breaks are going to the, the amount of copy that you have so that they can figure out how many column inches they have for the magazine. Um, now let's see. Um, so I had said during this uh, I had said during this algorithm J will take the values n n minus one dot 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 until either reaching zero or a location containing the input word x and you change it um, saying in the execution of the algorithm J will sequentially take the values n, n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on until reaching either 0 or a location. And so this dot, dot, dot was, you know, the was not good here. We wanted to have uh, this and so on. Um, and um, I, uh, and so I didn't like the way the way that came out, but I uh, but I did, but, but it wasn't too hard to, subsequent steps will, will cause J to run through the sequence of values N, N minus 1, and so on. Then it, then it made sense to me. I, I put a comma here. I don't know if, if that one survived, but that's not too important. Um, <clears throat> previous page, I had, um, I had said, Oh, this is about the I versus we. Although numerical methods have many features of interest, we shall concern ourselves in this article with examples of non-numerical algorithms in order to emphasize the fact that algorithms deal primarily with the manipulation of symbols that need not represent numbers. Now, <clears throat> um, I wasn't using we, I mean, it sounded like I was using we in the formal sense because I'm talking about in this article uh, somehow. It, in, if we're really using we as you and me, we would say in this discussion or something like this. But the word article is sort of, it sort of uh, it wasn't wasn't the perfect uh, use of, of we in my in my my uh, uh, ideal sense. And, and naturally, uh, though, uh, this whole article was rewritten in, in in first person with I, and so it said. So um, her. Uh, let's see. Although numerical algorithms have many interesting features, I shall confine this discussion to non-numerical algorithms in order to emphasize the fact that algorithms deal primarily with the symbols and so on. Now, um, um, uh, I guess um, the. So I so I switched over to I. It's okay. I had you know on the final one, but I but I. Uh, I, I crossed out present here too. I couldn't. This discussion. I wanted to say the following discussion to non-numerical ones. I didn't want to say algorithms. Algorithms. A lot of time it was uh, it was uh, too too many times in, in a row. I guess. Uh, but the main thing here is that I that, that she changed it to something where I where it's ta where it's me talking and and I and that was okay. Uh, but I didn't want to emphasize myself all the way through. So so a lot of the other stuff had to be changed into passive voice. Let's see, where are we here? Um, okay, algorithm A, sequential search we already talked about. Here's something. What is this? What do I have this flag here? You see that um, they had a great big space between K and the and the uh, uh, the subscript there, and no space around the equal sign and. And uh, this is typical when you try to put mathematics into a uh, typesetting system that isn't accustomed to it. And um, uh, the term key J means that the word is stored at location J. And and uh, that and I had to t change that around, but I'm not sure exactly why I flagged this one. Um, that's not that that important, I guess. Um, I, I let's see here. I was talking about a trick of putting something, giving some meaning to key zero. So it's so uh, so here I had to rewrite quite a bit um, in order because she had asked the question, and so in order to explain the question, it was better to have a better to, to say in words what more what more was going on. Um, <clears throat> okay, so anyway. Uh, but the, the main thing here is that I, I had written in my original manuscript, I had just said, unfortunately, and then I didn't say anything else. I just said, unfortunately, um, where, where, is my, where is my manuscript here? Here I said, un 
unfortunately, the most commonly used computer programming languages, Standard, Fortran, and COBOL, don't allow zero as an index. So this improvement couldn't be made easily in such languages. So now what, what actually came out, she started out first and says, unfortunately for programmers, the most commonly used, ah, the commonest, commonestly used, I don't know, the most commonly used computer um, uh, language, programming languages um, uh, do not allow zero. And so, um, yeah, that was, a, that was a, a reasonable. When you start out with something, unfortunately, it's, it seems very clear to you that it's unfortunate, but it doesn't seem clear to the rest of the world, you know, to who, to, to what subclass of people it's unfortunate. So, although it's still a little bit awkward, it was necessary to, to say that, I, I now realize. Um, okay, so, um, Okay, so that happened there. Let's see now. Now here was one that got really clobbered. Um, then we're as large as a million. This would be a very bad way to search the table. I'm talking about sequential search. We must be searching such a large table frequently. Otherwise, we wouldn't have gone to the expense of building it. So we had better not waste time during the search. Uh, the quarter of the cheap change. If n were as large as as a million, a simple sequential search would be a very poor way to look through the table. And if we needed to write an algorithm to search through such a large table, we would have to have some reason to be searching the table frequently. Otherwise, we would not have gone to the expense of compiling it. Therefore, it is best not, and so on. So I, well, okay, um, uh, now, um, uh, I, I put we back in there somehow. Let's see what, what actually came out of the, Um, what, what I, what, what actually came out? That's um, yeah, the we got to survive anyway. Yeah. Okay. So in the uh, in the article, but it, it it does the sentence that actually the paragraph actually came out to be reasonably well. Then a simple sequential sentence would usually be an unbearably slow way to go through. We would hardly go to the expense of building such a large table unless we expected to search it frequently, and we would not want to waste any time during the search. So in something like that, it's we can do better than that. That that. Um, uh, the word we was allowed to survive in that in that case here. 1642 East 56th Street. I have a I'm feeling that Scientific American's offices. So I don't know. Um, is that? I don't know. Well, um, uh, a lot of the things I did were just simple, like. Here she's here. It says search, and the next sentence says searching again. Just change it to another word. Looking, it looks sounds reads a little reads more interesting way. Um, let's see now. On the other hand, when looking up someone, when one is looking up someone's name, I, I'm just having to. To, uh, to to make this is just going back to, to present tense instead of or, or active voice instead of passive voice. Um, what must be done in the event of an unsuccess? Okay, I think I better skip to something that's more highlight here. So now here is another case where where uh, where something I wrote had to be quite expanded. Um, I said, this, al <coughs> this algorithm uses some, and assumes also that key one less than or equal key two less than or equal three dots less than or equal key n. So here, this got rewritten uh, into a long English. Moreover, it is assumed that the word stored at location one, key one, is less than or equal to the, the word stored at location two, key two. He had capital L there, it didn't sound right, which is less than or equal to the, the word stored at location three, key three, and so on, all the way up to the word stored in location n, key n. And so uh, this condition can be written, and then she gives uh, uh, the formula here, th throwing in an extra key three that wasn't present. Um, now, when, uh, now, let's look at the, at the, at the page, please. Um, that came in, <clears throat> unfortunately, just because she had this extra one that didn't fit in a line. Um, but but there was a very strange break, and um, 
and uh, so we had to. Uh, now I was now at this point it was too late to make any changes that would affect the number of lines in the in the article, so it had to be had to be transposed downward. Um, uh, but uh, what did they actually? They actually got it to look to look reasonable somehow, except that they changed it to less than signs instead of less than or equal signs. Whoops, I didn't catch that. Oops. Oh well, there it is. Oh, I found out that. Wow, oh, my goodness, 600 times. Oh gosh, that's terrible. Now, um, the when I found out when I talked to her on the telephone is is that the editors in New York City have to write the captions for these and and figure them out so that so that the last line of every caption is flush right, and that and they actually calculate. They count letters and 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 the lengths of, of letters, and they in New York, and then phone this to Chicago, and and then um, you know and, and take what they you know and, and uh, like like here was a case where where the um, they had problem in the, in this in this line here, but each line break is is hand determined uh, at this time. This was 1977, and and these people have a two-day deadline. I mean, they're, they're spending. All their time doing doing crazy stuff like that. No wonder she couldn't polish my article. <laughs> she had to. And so anyway, I could solve this one by just taking out some some words of that line. But um, uh, but every every single uh, caption was uh, was was made to fit like this. And then they had this neat algorithm for for doing it. And that is that they re they remove the word the um, f starting at the end of the caption and and going back to the beginning as as, as much far as they needed. You look at the um, like, um, uh, which is left boundary of search, meaning that Gibbs is not in table. You see what I mean? If we, um, <laughs> yeah, if we go to the end of, of captions in Scientific American, the the, the word the can, can, tends to tends to disappear with the amount of increase of frequency. I think this is wonderful. Okay. Um, okay. Now let's see. Um, Here's, a, here's an example of something that they, that they, that uh, is typical also of refereeing, and they, they they wanted more information. So I had written in original, I had said, in, in fact, why Pearl and a, a, a Itai of of an inch? She, she says, what institution have recently shown that something or other? And and th then uh, meanwhile, a better theorem had been proved by Andy and Francis Francis Yao uh, before they came to Stanford, and uh, this. And so I, you know, I changed that, and I, and I could put the the uh, institutions in here. But this, um, but this was one of the one of the things that they that they uh, um, uh, encouraged me to uh, to supply uh, information as to as to the place where these where these people uh, live here. Now here's an I just want to show you this that uh, although although in the first paragraph she she changed my sentences to nice and short ones. Here's one that says on the other hand for searches executed by Computer experience. <laughs> she never likes common. Search is ex executed by computer experience has shown that an interpolation search is usually not an improvement over a binary search, both because accessibility to the memory of a computer is typically not random enough, and because the extra calculation per comparison required by the interpolation takes more time than the amount of time that is saved by reducing the number of comparisons. Now, my original sentence was was uh, I think that was originally two two or three sentences of mine, and so uh, so I you know broke them broken back up again into something else. Uh, another um, uh, split infinitive. Here's where the punctuation was was uh, was relevant uh, for the 20, 20, the 31 commonest English words here, talking about the words a and and so on. Uh, this is my comma here, um, but uh, she puts the a, she puts the comma inside the quotes, uh, which is you know, you know the rule that you would find in the in the grammar in the English books, but uh, not when you're referring to it as as a word that's going to be stored in the table. So uh, I guess we all know that. 
That's where that came from. Here's a sentence that said, in that way, the address of the word the would be. Now, if this had been in a caption. <laughs> um, um, a lot of times uh, it was like you said, thus the collision is avoided. This was technically incorrect. Thus the search will be carried out properly even when collisions occur is the correct way to say it. So so uh, but but it was clear to me that when when uh, when she made that error that uh, other people would you know that, that it, so I needed to uh, uh, as as again whenever a referee um, gives you a comment that's wrong it still this it still means that there was a defect in the original of some sort. Okay. Um, here, here she asked me like a referee would do. Um, yeah, I know we're running out of time. Um, but we had this lo long formula, and then she says, which is approximately equal to what simple equation? And so she asked me to supply some mathematics here. So it was a, it was a, uh, a, a, a job that was well done in the sense of also asking, asking for further information that she expected the author could supply, even, and, uh, and I'll continue the story on Friday. Thank you.